Hi everyone and welcome to this lecture series on chapter 16 on process costing. So um, in this lecture I want to cover um, first of all the characteristics of process costing and what type of companies and products would use process costing. Two, how the costs are tracked and how it's different from job order costing that we already learned in chapter 15. And then we're going to do an introduction to the four steps of process costing. We're not going to do all four steps. Uh, some of that we're going to learn in class or hopefully you learned it from reading the book. But I really just want to make sure you kind of get a basic understanding of the first two steps, which is the physical flow of units and equivalent units of production, which is step two or um, shortened to EUP. So here we go. <clears throat> now, as you know, there are two types of costing systems, job order costing that we learned in chapter 15 and process costing that we're learning now in chapter 16. And they are very different and different types of products use them. For, so in job order costing, as, we, as we've already learned, Every product is unique. So just like that Lego example we were doing in class, every single group was doing a different type of vehicle. So each product was unique. Each product required a different amounts of direct materials, right? Because each one, as you guys counted the direct materials, every single one had a different number of pieces. Each one required a different amount of direct labor. Okay, so as you guys were timing yourselves with that Lego activity, every single one required a different amount of time. Job order costing uh, is typically used for low volume, meaning you're not making a whole lot of units. So for example, a company like a custom home builder, they only have enough resources to make you know, a few homes at a time, okay? Um, <clears throat> and, and they're usually custom made to certain customer specifications, and uh, therefore there's a lot of customization in the production process, right? We're gonna set up our production process to do whatever it is that you specifically need to do. So it's like also a customized production process, okay? Process costing is different. Okay, under process costing, each product is identical. Okay, so take these pens. They look exactly the same. Yes, I know they are different colors, that's okay. But for the most part, they look absolutely identical. As opposed to a custom house, every custom house is going to look different. And just like the vehicles we did in class, every single vehicle looked different. These ones all essentially look the same. The only difference is the color, okay? Um, each product has the same amount of direct materials. Each product then requires the same amount of direct labor because again, they're exactly the same. So the inputs are the same. For process costing, it's generally high volume or mass production. So, you know, I was telling you with a custom home, you're maybe making a few homes at any given time. Uh, for a company like BIC, they sell 57 billion pens every second. So they make a lot of pens, a lot, a lot, a lot of pens, okay? So they are what we consider high volume. They make many, 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 many of them, okay? And also, um, the production process includes a lot of repeated steps. Um, there, it's not custom made or, or custom production. It's the same steps over and over because we're basically making the same product over and over and over. And, um, and therefore, there's a lot of standardization. That means we're going to set a standard production process that's exactly the same for every product. And this ensures that every product, again, is exactly the same. That's what we want out of process costing is that every single pen is exactly the same. As opposed to a custom home, our goal is for each one to meet the customer's certain needs. So it's just a different goal, different production process. So when I say produce with repeated steps, this is what I mean. Okay, there you see, filling the pens, putting the pieces together, filling the pens. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just the same. The machine's doing the same thing over and over and over again. And that's why, what I mean by repeated steps and by um, customization. I'm sorry, standardization, right? It's a standard set of steps for each one. And 
<clears throat> and that's a lot of times why you'll see machinery used in process costing because you want to have that standard where every single thing is exactly the same. If a human is doing those things, there's a chance that there's going to be some human error. Whereas with a machine, chances are the machine is going to do the exact same thing every single time. Okay, so those are the key uh, or some d just differences in the characteristics. But there are some similarities between job order costing and process costing. Um, and the similarity is that no matter what product it is, whether it's a custom home right here or um, pens, they all have the same three elements of inventory cost, right? Direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. And both job order costing and process costing have the same goal in mind, which again, they're both cost accounting systems. And as we learned, cost accounting systems are the method a company uses to track the cost of producing goods and services. So whether you're using job order costing or process costing, they're, they both have the same goal of tracking the cost of the goods. And again, those costs, whether for both Job order costing and process costing are direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. That is exactly the same. Okay, but there is a key difference. Okay, and that is how the jobs are tracked. So as we've already learned, under job order costing, costs are tracked by job. So we have direct materials going to job one, job two, job three. We have direct labor going to job one, job two, job three. And we have factory overhead going to job one, job two, job three. And um, you guys actually did this in class when we were doing our Lego activity. You were tracking the cost for each one of your jobs. <clears throat> then you would combine the costs from all of the jobs and that would go into your work and process account. And then any goods that were completed would move on to your finished goods account. Okay. Now, I want to talk briefly about the term cost object. So that term cost object just basically means the thing that we assign costs to. And as you can see in job order costing, what we're assigning the cost to is the job. So in job order costing, your cost object is the job. I'm assigning direct materials to each job. I'm assigning direct labor to each job. I'm assigning factory overhead to each job. And the reason why we do it this way for job order costing is because each job is unique. Each job requires a different amount of direct materials and direct labor. And therefore, it makes sense to track them by job because each one is using different resources. Okay. But with process costing, <clears throat> it's different. The costs are tracked by process or department because usually um, different departments are in charge of doing each process. Okay, So that means we track it by the steps in the production process. So as an example, talking about pens, right? let's say, and this is very oversimplified, I actually did have a client that made pens, so I know probably too much about what it takes to make a pen, but um, I'm giving you a very oversimplified example just you know to kind of keep it simple, okay? But let's say there were three steps in the process of producing pens, okay? First step is to prepare the ink that goes inside the pen. The second step is the casing or the outside kind of plastic of the pen with the, uh, with the lid. And then the third step is packaging them all up so that they're ready for sale, okay? So under process costing, um, the steps for every individual pen are the same. So whether it's black pen, blue pen, green pen, red pen, they're all going through the same steps. First got to do the ink, then got to do the casing, then got to do the packaging. Okay. So in this case, because the steps are the same for all the process, products, but each step requires different resources, different amounts of direct materials and different amount of direct, direct labor. It makes more sense for process costing to track the cost by process or department. So the ink department, the casing department, and the packaging department. So you could call it process or department either way. Um, it's, it's the same, you know, same concept is that whichever group is doing whichever task, that's how we're going to assign the costs. So we're going to assign direct materials related to making the ink cartridge. That all goes to, 
to um, a separate work in process account for the ink department, okay? Um, then for the casing department, the direct materials involved in the casing process would go to a separate work in process account for the casing department. And then the packaging department, they have a different type of direct material that gets added in. So we have a separate work in process account for um, that packaging department. Okay, so that's one of the key differences really between job order costing and process costing with the way that the, um, the costs are tracked, right? They both, as you see, have direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead, but job order costing only has one work in process account. And all the job cost sheets, sorry, I'll flip back to that, right? They only have one, one um, work in process account. Okay, but all the job cost sheets flow into that one work in process account. But under process costing, there is a separate work in process account for each step in the process. Okay, and then we're going to assign the direct materials, the direct labor, and the factory overhead to each of those processes as they're being used. Okay. So in this case, the cost object or the thing that we're assigning cost to is the process or department. Another thing I want to point out is that um, the flow of, of costs, you'll notice, you know, for work in process, so the first step that that ink department, their output is going to be the input for the next department, the casing department. Okay, so you need the ink cartridges first to be done, then you build the casing around it. Okay, then once the ink and the casing are together, that's the output from um, department two, that then becomes the input for department three, which is packaging. So really, um, as the goods move through the process, the output from one WIP account becomes the input for the next WIP account. And then that becomes the input for the next WIP account. Okay, so it comes out of one WIP, goes into the next, goes out of the next WIP, into the next. So the only phase in the process where that doesn't happen, of course, is the very last work in process account that finishes off the product, in this case, the packaging department, at that point, the output then is the finished good ready to sell, okay? All right, so now moving on, uh, we're gonna start an introduction to the steps in the process costing system. And there are, as you can see here, four steps. But in my uh, video, or what I want you to know before coming into class, is really just steps one and steps two. And I don't necessarily expect you to be total experts at these. I'm gonna, I just want you to conceptually understand how they work. Uh, so don't stress if you don't totally understand everything or can't do a complicated calculation or one of the exercises or problems. I just really more want you to understand very simply the concept behind them. So I'm going to start going over that in the second video. So stay tuned. <laughs>